Hello there, newcomer. Welcome to the Life Tips Podcast. My name is Nate, and I'm here to help you navigate through important situations that affect our everyday lives and provide a roadmap for you to make the best decisions in the future. The fun part is that each topic is unique to whatever you're going through. And it doesn't matter your youth or gender. Everyone can benefit. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and let's discover how we can live our best life today. Enjoy. Hey world, it's Nate. Welcome back to Life Tips. This is episode two. You are listening to this podcast live as a reminder on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more thanks to Anchor. Anchor's backing this podcast. Everything's free and easy from app distribution to streaming platforms. You can even make money off of your podcast as well. Uh, It's a one-stop shop for podcasts pretty much. All you gotta do, To get started, just go to www.anchor.fm, download the app to your Android or iOS device, and start recording. So now that I've covered that, I'm going to bring in this very special young lady. She's over here here blushing, y'all. It's hilarious. (laughs) Anyway, um... Guys, Galena's here, and Hello. she's agreed to help with the podcast today, so I'm really, really excited, and thanks. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. So, yeah, just, this is podcast episode is dedicated to women today, so that's why Galena's here. She's literally going to take this over and kind of help out the ladies and the young girls who might be listening so uh, I'm just going to basically be here asking questions and kind of keeping the flow going. But without further ado, um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm Galena. I'm actually originally from Ukraine. <clears throat> I was adopted at seven and a half and I was here Ooh. for almost 18 years now. Um, my... Uh, career field is in cybersecurity, as uh, you already know, mm-hmm. and I also love writing romance novels. That is what I do. It's my passion. Mm-hmm. Um, I broke my first computer at age eight and a half, and you know, when you have only one computer in the family and you can't afford to get another one, you have to learn to fix it. So ever since then, I've been hooked in uh, computers, and that's how I'm in cybersecurity now. Yeah. Wow. She's from Ukraine, guys. I melted for five seconds after she told me that. I was like, (laughs) wow. Oh, my goodness. By the way, ignore all of the crap and drama in the government regarding Ukraine. Yes, Um, I did not rig any elections. I was born there. It's not my fault. So love me. Don't hate me. Okay? Cue Beauty and the Beast right now, guys. Um, Tale as old as time. Hold on, no. Um, Because, no, seriously, guys, she reminds me of Belle from Beauty and the Beast. She loves reading. She writes, well, Belle, I don't think Belle wrote romance novels. No, she didn't. um, She's crazy gorgeous. I'm I'm sitting right next to her right now. Um, But still, like, Belle was strong and, you know, opinionated in the animated movie and the live action ver- version of the movie mm-hmm. now we just need a guest on and a, maybe a prince that can turn into a beast oh and my goodness we can recreate the movie with you oh let's of. not do that no oh, okay. we're not doing that <laughs> <laughs> no okay. okay moving on uh so now we're actually going to get into the meat and potatoes of this by the way this scenery is just amazing we're at a park right now gorgeous. recording this and once we're done we're going to go and walk around get some exercise and lovely just weather. chill very lovely weather i'm telling you um and we're also doing a photo shoot today so well maybe if we do a photo shoot the pictures will be up there later you can find everything um on social media later but anyway next question before we end up you know going off on a tangent so yeah uh 
again, this podcast is about women or geared towards women for women, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not a woman. That's why she's taking this over. Um, so yeah, who is the most important woman? Who is the most important woman in your life? And how does that like affect you? And then like, lastly, like, what would you say to the young girls listening right now who have their moms in their life? Um, well, to start off your question, my most important person in my life right now is definitely my mom. Sweet. She's been a role model for me my whole life. Um, and a little background about me is that because I came, I lived in an orphanage for half my life, I didn't really know what hard work was. I really didn't have anything of my own. So everything that I have, I have over to her. But at the same time, I've grown and I've learned how to become an independent, strong woman through her and because of her I've grown to have a strong work ethic so for all the girls listening out there it's like just be thankful for your parents and don't don't judge anybody from where they come from their background because you work hard for it you're gonna get to where you want to go just don't give up (laughs) (laughs) so that's what I would definitely say and anything you set your mind to you're gonna be able to get it done it's just, you can't give up. You give up and you don't ever forget where you came from, how how your life was before you are where you are right now. That's a major turnover. If you keep thinking about the negatives, you're never going to be able to get to anywhere you are. It's an important part of women today. That's, that's facts, honestly, because yeah. a lot of... <clears throat> Honestly, a lot of women do grow up in single family homes, and ironically, the the, the father isn't in the home, mm-hmm. so it is the mom that's raising the child, and you would fall into that category, unfortunately. I'm, I'm not but, unfortunate. Right. But here's why. Right. I don't, I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's a great way. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. But, it's just... When you have a single parent, it kind of opens up your eyes to the fact that, you know, you're pretty lucky. You have a parent who's willing to do anything for you, and you have to work ten times harder than anybody. And you get just as much as love as you do with two parents. Wow. That's that's honest that you right there. Mm. No one's going to love you more than your parent right there. Right. And um, this... Should I ask this now? I'll probably ask this later, but um, I've already mentioned a- ahead of time that this, you know, it's the, for the ladies, so this podcast is for the ladies, okay? So women, share this with all your lady friends and your girlfriends and your daughters and granddaughters. It's for y'all. So, yeah, this is the one, not the one episode, but there will be more podcast episodes dedicated to y'all, but this is the one that I wanted to record now because the holidays are coming up and... Uh, yeah, we'll get to that later. But Galena's now the first woman on my podcast, which is totally amazing. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, so, like, would you describe yourself as a young... I'm sorry, a strong... Of course you're young. But would you describe <laughs> yourself as a strong woman? How do you define being a strong, independent woman? Because a lot of girls grow up with different interpretations of what it looks like to be a strong woman in society and from culture and from the entertainment industry. So from you from a personal perspective like what does that look like for you and then like yeah what would you uh what would you say to like the young girls listening as far as like you know definitions and where they take their advice from and honestly that's a very good question i've never had anyone ask me that question before so being strong it's it's hard to describe it it's like a an emotion it's like an emotion, but it's just doing what you have to do in every day and having the strong people around you, whether it's your friends, your family, um, your parents, or just having a support person to talk to. Um, it's really important to have, especially women nowadays, to kind of have someone today they can go out to and say, like, you know, I can trust them to talk to me. And I can talk to them without being, um, being told off or being able to be judged and through that strength you kind of realize that you you know you take that to heart you get their advice and you take that to everyday life and you don't let anything bring you down Mm -hmm. and you always know that you know you have friends to lean on Mm -hmm. and you can get through anything just because you have them in your life 
And that's an important aspect of it. We are going to go off on a tangent like twice here, but you mentioned you mentioned the importance of having friends and being able to trust people. I know for a fact, living living with women, having mostly fe- female friends, trust is a huge, huge thing for women. Yes, it is. So, you know, can, can you, like, share a little bit about that from your perspective as far as, like, because you don't have many, you don't have many female friends, do you? You, you not every, not everyone is the same, but, like, you mostly, like, have guy friends mm-hmm. primarily you don't really have like or you're not really i'm gonna let you explain that before, in, instead of just insinuating but okay. i kind of want to get into that because like that's key for young girls as well just making friends and being able to trust people and you know whether you know because i feel like sometimes oh my gosh it's okay um... there had to be there had to be an ambulance. Ignore the ambulance, guys. But I feel like for for women, it's like, and young girls in particular, it's like, there's something wrong with you if you have all guy friends versus having no, girlfriends. No. You've got to have like a balance of both. Don't want to confuse y'all, but like, I'm going to let Galena talk about that, but I really want to just delve in that friendship topic on a tangent for like a few seconds and just let Galena talk about that so well honestly having guy friends is not a bad thing it's actually one of the most amazing things right in your life mm-hmm. just because you know you can trust them more and they don't judge but also because no matter what part of life we're in something happens to us where it's like that trust that you give to the other person is just it's broken and I think for a lot of us women, when we when we open up and when we trust you, that takes a lot for us to do. It's a lot of um, energy for us to do that. So when the first time we let you in, we're hoping that, you know, you're not going to let us down. And we're giving you that safe keep to letting you know that, hey, you know, I tell you something, it's going to be confident. Unfortunately, sometimes that trust is broken. So for us to honestly just have that friendship with our actual friends, it's a major turnover in our lives that's really good because um sometimes honestly especially in relationships like let me tell you something it's especially in relationships it's gonna be a hard break go for it and listen up lady i've had a personal experience where i trusted somebody and i've really really trusted them for about a year and a half and then all of a sudden it just that trust was broken and let me tell you something, once that trust is broken, not a lot can do to repair it. And we, we women will sit there and we'll try to be like, oh, it's our fault, we have to get this done. And then at the end of the day, it's like, it's not on us, it's on you. And to let another person in after you've destroyed your trust, that's, that's going to be a huge impact on how we move forward. Because we don't open up, we don't trust easily. So when we do trust, especially a lot of my friends, we all trust our guy friends more just because we can be more open with them. Mm. And, you know, mm-hmm. we know that you're going to be honest with us. You're going to be the actual facts. You're not going to be like sugarcoat anything. You're going to be straight to the truth. You're going to be honest mm. with us. That's what we want. Mm. Wow. And, like, that was that's, that's another key thing because breakups and women yeah. I know for a fact that when it comes to now not all women are the same in this category I know I think I've mentioned this in previous uh, podcasts that there are some female friends of mine that you know breakups won't phase them then they'll go from to the next guy and then a few months later they break up with that guy and go to the next guy yeah. and it's just like but for the most part women really do take breakups worse than guys do and it affects them for a long time and it takes them a while to like you said trust again open up their heart to be to love again it's more of i'm sorry for cutting you off it's more like we trust you and we feel we feel a lot we feel that heartbreak we feel that love we feel that empathy that we want you guys to reciprocate but sometimes after a breakup happens it's 
the heartbreak that hurts us the most and it's our hearts that are just bleeding and torn apart and we have to in a way kind of deal with coping with that and that's just not possible sometimes like men sometimes they can get over things over one night i'm gonna say this even fuck boys fuck boys don't care they get over it we women we feel that we hurt and it just takes us months sometimes even years to get over that i'm gonna say right now i've been the person that i loved i've been uh gone from for almost three months now and every day that pain is just I'm telling, and back in my mind, I'm saying, it's okay, go out there, I put one foot in front of the other, I go do what I gotta do, but then, it's like, if I see his contacts, or someone mentions it, whose acquaintance through me, through to him, Ooh, it just, it breaks dicey. me, and it's just, it's wow. the constant reminders, so, we feel it deeply, but, wow. at the same time, we're not, sometimes, we do fall into depression, and that's mm-hmm. okay, but mm-hmm. sometimes, also, it's like, we want to remind ourselves to put one foot in front of the other that we're strong and that we can do this and that's the major part of getting through everyday life even with that heartache right right now don't worry we 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 have there's a schedule there's a script (laughs) there's two more questions left but this this conversation is so good and since we're talking about things that women go through i'd say one of the biggest things that have impacted our culture over the last several several years is the me too movement yeah and i wanted to really mention that today with you because like for me it's it's difficult for me because i'm a guy i'm not just a i'm not just a guy like i i grew up in i grew up in church i think i've mentioned this in a previous podcast i grew up in church i you know read my bible i love god i have a great relationship with god and i go to church consistently bible study etc etc so i'm not like these other dudes out here and yet me too happens all the time thanks to one one guy's stupid decision has messed things up for guys all around the world now and the me too movement is out here and it almost feels like an attack on men which they're I'm going to put this in here. Candace Owens has championed that. Uh, For those of y'all who don't know, Candace Owens is one of the strongest black conservatives in the political movement today. And she's gone against the Me Too movement several times, saying that it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's an attack on men. So if you're listening to this, Candace, I love you. Thank you. But um, yeah, like it's, it's difficult for me because I do feel attacked sometimes. And it's just like, I would never do any of these things yeah. to women just because of my upbringing and how much of a, not a nice guy I am, but just like, I'm a gentleman. Mm-hmm. So I would never do any of these things. But yet other guys continue to do these things to women and it's all plastered over Twitter and all the ladies are fight, are, are, are arguing and championing for dudes to be locked up. And now it's at the point where we can't be chivalrous we can't I'm, I'm an old soul by the way it's like we, we can't be chivalrous we can't you know treat women the way they're meant to be treated or from a romantic standpoint now because anything we do could be a slip up could lead to sexual harassment sexual this so i'm sorry guys i i have a little bit of bias against the me too movement as a guy but i do see the other side i do see how it does affect women and how women are just like hurt by it and it's just like we need to do something we need to change things we need justice for our women who go through things so let me turn this over to galena before y'all hit me up in the comment (laughs) section in the messages like shut up nate you don't know what you're talking about (laughs) well first of all the me too movement i'm not gonna say is directed only at guys it can be women too and it's not directed so much as you guys it's more at the workforce and everything that goes in our personal lives because uh, i'm gonna be honest uh, donald trump jr i'm sorry he's coming yes donald anyway. trump jr did and i quote if they can't handle being sexually harassed they shouldn't be in the workforce and i'm gonna end the quote there because that says everything about our uh, me too movement you suck bro <coughs> i'm not gonna name names but i'm gonna be honest lock I, him had to. I, I, <laughs> had to. it's okay it's okay i've been i work in a in a place where I have been sexually harassed and it's come to an attention sometimes when it's been so uncomfortable that 
I didn't know how to turn to my manager because she had favoritisms. I didn't know how to turn over to my supervisor because she was close to the person that I wanted to report. And both of them are female? No, both of them are females. And the guy that I wanted to talk to the most to, he wouldn't even let me finish the sentence. And the Me Too movement, I believe, started was because women needed to put it out there that, hey, you know, this is happening. This is what makes us tick. This is what's making us uncomfortable. And getting through every day is just going into work. It's uncomfortable. And especially because when you get harassed, sexually harassed, or any type of harassment, you know, doing your job, you can't be professional. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to want to come in. You're going to be uneasy. You're not going to want to talk to anybody. And I'm going to tell you firsthand experience, sexual harassment I'm thankful that the Me Too movement started at all Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. it brings the attention of women. It brings the attention of men for anybody who's going through it that, you know, you're not alone, Mm -hmm. that we're hearing you. We understand we're all going through what you're going through and we're sticking Mm -hmm. together through this. So everybody, even the whole world know that you're not going to be able to get through us because it's not Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And I understand some cultures are like, oh, you know, you have to stand there and take it. And this is what's. This is how it needs to be going on. You can't say anything because you're going to be fired. There's retaliation. No, the Me Too movement started just for women empowerment, men empowerment. Anybody, I know that men for a fact have been harassed. I'm not going to, I'm going to be the first one to say they've been harassed. And I'm standing on for both sides here. Mm -hmm. It has happened. But I think that for both sides, they need to know that, you know, they're not alone. And you can talk to somebody about it who's been through what you're going through. And I think the Me Too movement is a voice. For people who don't know who to turn to, who have had something that's happened to them where they can't go to anybody they trust because they're afraid of retaliation or they're afraid that if I say something, I'm going to be in trouble. Wow. And that's just, that's how it happened. And I'm thankful for the women who started this, whoever who was started the Me Too movement. It's opened up doors. It's opened up the floodgates so that people know that, you know, we're listening. We know what's going on and we will take action. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> I know I said that we were not going to go off on another tangent, but there's one more topic I want to hit because it literally just happened last week and I was talking to a bunch of people about it and it pertains to women. And then we'll finish this up. Okay, guys. So thank you for staying. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you. Um, last you. last topic of tangents is, um, yeah, so, wow, there was a, there's a dude that is a pastor out in California who has written books and, you know, done seminars and this guy is huge. Uh, But he specifically came out of nowhere saying that, you know, just terrible things about Beth Moore. It It was Pastor John MacArthur and he basically came out and you know said that there's no biblical evidence to support a woman pastor and then he went off on a tangent blasting women pastors blasting women ministers really yes female blasting women of faith in the christian community who are out here doing god's work and i know for a fact that you know the church i go to like my pastor is one, my bishop's wife, and two, she's the executive pastor over the whole church. And there are other ministers and pastors and elder elects at my church. So I was a little, well, I'm sorry, not a little, I was totally, totally offended when John MacArthur said, and I quote, go home to really? Beth Moore. Really? Really? Oh, and, no. and if you don't, if for those of you who don't know, Beth Moore is a, Christian evangelist and uh, she's written a bunch of Bible studies and stuff for women. My mom has taken some of her courses. So she's big and she's, you know, mainstream and popular and stuff like that. And this happened like last week. And so I'm over here like, all right, Christian community pastors in particular, what do y'all think about this? I hit up one of my, I've hit up one of my pastor friends in Florida. He was totally against this guy's comments. And then you added the you had some that supported me and him and one half of the spectrum is like okay we support that john MacArthur was wrong Mm -hmm. on the other hand you get people that 
are on his side, like, oh, there shouldn't be women pastors, it's not biblical and all of that jazz. So I'm looking like, okay, let me talk to Galena about this because um, that's definitely something that we need to mention right here because there are most likely young girls listening to this and I know that my pastor is probably listening to this and all the women at the church that I go to are probably listening to this right now. So, yeah, what's your thoughts on not just women in culture being taken down, but even women in the Christian community being taken down? And how do you think that needs to be, you know, changed? Should the balance be, you know, should the scales be balanced between Christian men and Christian women, you know, being used by God, et cetera, et cetera? So I'll let you handle that one. Well... Honestly, I'm going to say that we're not back into the 19th century. Mm-hmm. We're not there. Women have evolved. We are in the workforce. We're doing what we need to do. We're doing the Me Too movement. We are opening up jobs. We're opening up our communities. We're helping the homeless. You know, being a pastor is, I think, one of the most amazing things. I know a friend who is a pastor as well. Wow. She moved down to Los Angeles recently. But, like, Women can do anything like a man can. And to have someone tell us, oh, you know, go home, you can't do this. No offense, my mom, watch my language, but screw you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to say that, but screw you because we're strong, we're independent, we know how to get things done, we're smart. And if you think you're the only one who can get a job done, then you need to think again because women, we, we talk to each other. We, we talk to the community as we understand what's going on. We get the research done. We talk to our husbands. We talk to our family members. We can do anything that you guys do. And at the same time, we have a strong work ethic, which means when we say, you know, we're going to get something done, we're going to get it done. Look at all the women who are in Congress. Look at all the women who are. Yes, Cortez. Love you. Cortez. Look Cortez, at Senator Warren, who's running for president, which, yes. mind you, I think that's amazing. Like I said, being a pastor is non different. Having a religious belief that is beautiful because that way you have something to believe in and having other people to encourage them to follow a faith that's great and the fact that you know you believe in God and you want to talk about that and you want to help women support each other especially other pastors that's culture right there you can't get any cultural than that so any man who is biased against a woman they need to go home and, and let me tell you something. We women, Ooh. we will come out after any man who says, you can't do that because we're already here. Ask any woman. We will go after you. And I'm just not standing for my own personal view. I'm saying that for all the women out there because we tend to stick together. And when you come after one of us, you come after all of us. That's how I'm going to say it. Facts. <laughs> yeah. Well, that basically takes us to the la- the fourth to last question, which basically was, you know, did you consider a role model for yourself or would you consider yourself a role model for young girls? Which you just basically, you've been role modeling the whole podcast. So (laughs) go ahead, take that one. Honestly, um, I used to bike race when I was little and I used to become captain and I used to do all of this. And I had a young girl once tell me like, you know, my dad won't let me do this because I'm a girl. Do what? Bike race. Oh, wow. Oh, you can't bike race because you're a girl. And ever since then, any time I see a little girl going out there doing what she loves, I'm, I'm vouching for them because I'm like, you're, you're setting up the floodgates. You're opening up this view of other women who can do anything that they set their minds to. So just because if somebody tells you, oh, you can't do it, don't listen to them. You can go out there and you can go read a book. You can go write a book. You can go into computer science. If you love math, then become a math teacher and keep that up for other women who are going through a struggle and don't don't give up on them and stand by them and and just support them and let them know that, you know, you're here for them and what you're going through, I'm going through and I'm going to be here until the end and just supporting each other. That's a huge, huge, huge part and being honest with each other. That's another awesome thing. So be a role model not for only yourself but for everyone around you and also look up to the other role models that are guiding you to help the other women and other young girls who are going through something difficult i know that had somebody who's homeless and i'm not going to say her name but she is homeless 
and I've been helping her to read. And wow. she, she's only 15 years old, and this oh girl cannot goodness. read. Wow. And, and her mom doesn't know how to read either. And oh, so man. I'm getting a community of people who I enlisted on Facebook. I'm like, you know, this is what we need. Um, we have this little girl who's going into the fifth grade who doesn't know how to read. So we're setting up communities where we're helping the homeless people even read. Wow. And we're giving away books, and we're giving food, and we're standing by each other, and we're supporting education. So being a role model and setting up and doing, wow. helping others, what more could you ask for? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> that's a life tip right there. Help people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Definitely. So if, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And then we're basically done because this is the literal end of the podcast. <laughs> I would freeze time. And here's why before you judge me, okay? I don't judge. The reason I want to say I want to freeze time is just because I have had such a short time to, like, you know, time goes away so quick. Mm -hmm. And before a blink of an eye, you just, it's gone. And I want to sit there and sometimes I, if I'm driving or something, I want to freeze it so I can just look at the scenery or be with my family and just look at them fully and see who they are mm. and i want to see the moments around my life because i feel like everyone's especially in the mornings everyone's out the door back gotta go to this gotta go do this gotta go do this gotta do this we never stop right and i think it's important that we kind of get a chance to stop and observe and to listen and to see and to kind of understand that what we see it impacts our daily life mm. and also those some of those moments you may never get back and you want to have that for as long as you can. Right. That's my superpower. If Aww. I had one, I want one more. Oh my goodness. So adorable. Oh my God. Thank you. Anyway. <laughs> um, so for the last couple minutes, I know we went over time and it was super long, but for the last couple minutes, guys, I just want to tell y'all how we met because I'm over here making history, y'all. <laughs> like, ugh. So a mutual friend connected us because we were all going to go to Hershey Park one day. Yeah. Uh, the random. And so I'm over here messaging this this woman, talking about, all right, we're going to meet up in College Park. Yeah. And, you know. It's going to be a ride. It's going to be a day. ride. And then it's like, all right. So. You started a new job. I did. I did start a promotion at my job at the time. Oh, wow. And I was like, whoa. So long story short, guys, the. Everybody in the group chat was going back and forth, back and forth yeah. over, you know, oh, we don't have enough money or we don't have enough time to take off for our jobs. I'm like, what the heck, guys? Make up your mind. So it ended up not happening. But what did happen was that a little something something was birthed out of a something something. <laughs> and we met at Starbucks about now. It's October's almost over. So we met at Starbucks like five, six weeks ago at yeah. this point. And then it was just a snowball effect from Starbucks to FaceTime, FaceTime to Dagon Sky Zone, Sky Zone which we have to go back to we again. We have to I go really... back. I know we have to go back. And then we went to then the we went to a, Markov's haunted, we went to a haunted forest this past week <laughs> and got scared to death almost. 14 miles of back roads. That oh, thank God you were with me. Yes. Thank, thank God, God you were with me. I was God scared. I think I, was I got with a her. speeding ticket. Yeah, and I, I was literally ticket. praying over the whole vehicle. Like the whole time I was like, Lord, don't let nothing happen to us. Be with Galena. All this <laughs> I was literally praying in the spirit the entire car ride home. Cause it was what you said fourteen miles. Fourteen miles. Fourteen of back. miles of back road. I only saw a few cars and then we kept driving. Exactly. There was nobody there. there it was, was dark. No one. It was dark, guys. And coming it in, was like a movie. Yes, and coming in, it's like we followed this person before us, but then after that it was like it was like a dead end. It, it was, was foggy. It was end. dark. Yes. And I kept thinking, I said, "So please don't let it come out." Like the it with the clown. Oh, with the Pennywise. Balloon. Yes, Pennywise. I was. I was. Man. I was. I was out. I was like, if "Nope." Pennywise I, came out. I was about to just run home. I was mm -mm, like, "Thank God, nope. Candia was in the car, and so were you," because I was right, like, "Right, right, right." I can't. Right. 
I was scared. I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. And and no. and guys, like it was so scary. I was holding on to her for dear life. We at were one clutching point, the fingers. At one each point, other. you had to pull me back in because I was trying to get out. I was like, yes, oh hell no, I'm yes, out. And I tried to like yes. run away, and he wouldn't let go of my hand. Oh my goodness, yeah, I, I couldn't. With the guy with the chainsaw, yes. I was like, I'm out. I'm yes. gone. Yes, I couldn't let here. go of her hand. So, long story short, guys, I mean. We just did that last week, and now we're here again today. Yeah. And then we have another event planned next week on we, Tuesday. We yes. Do? Because we were originally supposed to do this next Tuesday, oh, not yeah. today, but we just picked today because the I'm off and I don't yeah know. the community college she goes to was off with Thank classes God. today, so we were able to record this today, and then we're getting together next week, and we're going to go watch. Frozen 2 Two. when it comes out. This girl loves Frozen. Y'all, y'all, I love me some Disney, but she is a Frozen addict. Like, she watched the first movie probably a million times already. Yeah. And she wants to go see the second. I actually asked her to go watch the second Thank one. Thank you, by the way, because we're going. Welcome. We're and going. We are going, and it's going to be great, and I'm excited to binge watch and have a Frozen marathon. Yeah. Just a matter of when we actually go, because it's close enough to Thanksgiving and I have definitely travel plans and gotta fit it in, but 35 minutes. I think that's good enough for that's a podcast great. episode. Thank so you for having me. No problem, best <laughs> friend. <laughs> love oh, you. I love you so much. <laughs> anyway, before we go, uh, as usual, you can find me on Instagram, Nate underscore the underscore speaker. You can find me on Facebook at The Wise Orator. Uh, I still do motivational speaking. You can find my website on my social media accounts. I'm not giving you my Facebook. You can also find uh, my personal Facebook. I'm not giving you that. You can also find me on Twitter at Authentic Genuine Person. I think I told you all about that. So just find uh, find me on Twitter if you have that. Uh, what about you? Where are your social medias that people you, can follow you at? You can just look me up at Galena, G-A-L-L-I-N-A-B, on Snapchat. And Snapchat me, message me, and I hope to hear from you. And also you can Snapchat me if you want to read some of my books. I'll be more than happy to send you the link. Books? Yeah, I got three books out. You didn't know? She's an author. I am an author. She's Yay. an author. Yes. I think yes, that's goals. Lie. It's just, I want to get published, but it's so hard to do. Oh, trust me. After this, people <laughs> will probably be blowing me up like, where's Galena? We got to get her a publisher. I know a publisher. <laughs> I'm serious. That's literally going to happen, but. It's so hard to work on a book. I think for women, especially for like writing. Being an Last author, tip, guys. Being an author is so hard because, oh my God, you're in school, you got a job. I've been working on the marriage market for three years, and I'm She's writing done. a marriage book. Hold it's on. It's almost done. Hold on, three guys. And a half years. She has a marriage book coming. This is. This is, it's a historical romance. This is amazing. Oh, man. It's a historical romance book yeah. for weddings and mar- married couples. Two, uh, two clans who are technically enemies find each other in a marriage and then all of a sudden it's like an arranged marriage an arranged marriage and you do not expect the mistress you don't expect the the murders her father everything i'm just like everything that happens it's like i'm just trying to keep my fans on the toes and sometimes it's like i get one of those fans who's like if you don't update i will kill you i'm like please don't know I'll, I'll do you have a website that they can um, type in to like find that Look stuff on, uh if you go on uh snapchat or on uh wattpad or actually ink it i-n-k-i-t-t and search up g-b-r-i-n-d-a-52143 you'll find me my books are on there you might want to say that again for the people on the podcast who are listening so uh the website is ink it i-n-k-i-t-t dot com and my link is G B R I N D A five two one four three. Whoa. I am definitely gonna check this out when I get a chance. Yeah. So I can read it and post it on social media. Please tell give the me world your comments, and, your reviews, oh, any we will. ideas that you have. They will. It they will got help you. me out because Ooh. as a writer I think all especially women out there mm-hmm. who do like to have a personal hobby if it's writing or poetry we need support we need that constant people telling us 
can you add this? Can you remove this? Let's add this. Let's make this happen. It's wow. you giving us your input and your ideas makes us stronger people wow. for the book, and that way it makes our readers happy. And it helps us because we get cloudy in our brains when we write, and that's hard. Mm -hmm. So let's get it done. Wow. Okay, so y'all, don't just support <laughs> this podcast. Go support that book. Read her books. Get her rolling. So send me a message. I'd send love her to hear a message from you. so that she can blow up and get famous and have verified <laughs> oh God. Snapchat accounts. Oh, God. Yes, yes, yes. Women empowerment. Blow yes, Galena let's up. Let's stick together. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to get the heck out of here and go enjoy the rest scenery. of our time together. Enjoy the scenery. Yeah. Enjoy the, <laughs> the togetherness. But thanks, guys. Life Tips will be back in a couple days days oh daddy lo not gonna go there <laughs> oh no oh hell no i'm out bye guys bye. we're out thanks <laughs>